Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to start the 2019 spring session of the MCAS. So this is the only one that had ever gone live, okay? So they released the practice test, then they, they uh, gave out the 2019 spring computerized MCAS, and then COVID happened. So this is actually the only live session they've given over the computer. And you're going to see pretty early in that uh, well, there's some similarities to the practice test, but there's a few different key differences as well that we will highlight, okay? So, I got about 10 minutes here before class starts, so let's see if I can get through a few of these problems. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So, oh, also in the video description, uh, you should have a link to take this digitally, so if you have not done that yet, uh, the idea is that you take the problem digitally, you try to solve it, uh, you then use the PDF that is also in the video description, and then you follow along here, okay? So try the problem first. If you haven't tried this yet, click on that link, try it, and then you can watch this problem. If you do the reverse, you're not going to get as much out of it, okay? All right, so let's get right to it. Uh, so which of the following is equivalent to this expression? And they give us here, we have negative 5x times negative 6x squared plus 1, so we have a monomial times a binomial, right? And they give us four options. So one of the things you really need to be doing when you're taking this MCAS is using that piece of scrap paper they give you, because this would be so, so much easier if you could write down on this. But Alas, you're forced to take it over the computer. So just ask, use the scrap paper and I'll show you where to write on it. So here we're just going to distribute, okay? So this is really just testing our ability to know how to distribute distribution, okay? So negative 5x times negative 6x squared. It's also asking us if we know our exponential rules, right? So negative 5 times negative 6 is positive 30. And then x times x squared is x to the third because we add our exponents. Then negative 5x times positive 1 would be negative 5x. All right, so let's see. Here we go. Pretty straightforward. Now here you can tell what they wanted you to do is add the 5 and the 6. See why we have negative 11? Because negative 5 plus negative 6 is negative 11. That's why these options are here. For students that don't know how to distribute and they want to add, that's where they're going to circle, right? So we have to remember how to distribute. Distribution is just multiplication, right? All right, number two. <clears throat> All right, so number two. Uh, sorry, it's a big packet here. There we go. All right, so this one is all about function notation, right? So, you know, we've had plenty of practice with that. They're going to give you a few options. There's actually three options for each of these when you're using the drop down menu. Uh, and they give you, they ask you three questions. So find the f of zero, find f of five, find f of 18, when f of x is equal to x times 18 minus x, right? So here's how I would solve this, again, on the scrap paper. So you're going to use the scrap. You can, you can tell almost each problem we're going to be using our scrap paper. I'm going to write f of 0. And 0 is going to go where the x is. So 0 is going to go here. And 0 is going to go here, because that's where x is, right? So 18 minus 0 is 18. So 0 times 18. And 0 times 18 is 0. So f of 0 is 0. So that's what you'd choose for this one here. Okay, because there's three options here. Now f of 5, so f of 5 equals 5 times 18 minus 5. So we have to follow our order of operations here. Let me zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> 18 take away 5 is 13. And 5 times 13 is 65. So f of, oh, what did I do there? f of 5 equals 65. And that's what we put right here. That's one of the options. And the last one, f of 18. So we're going to have equals 18 is going to go with the x's. So 18 goes here. And then 18 minus 18. So 18 take away 18 is 0. So 18 times 0 and 18 times 0 is 0. So f of 18. f of, oops, f of 18. Yeah, 0. So 0 would go there. All right, and let's write that there because it's going to bother me if I don't. Okay. So yeah, we have 0, 65, and 0. So this is really just, hey, do you know how to use function notation? Yes or no? So that's pretty straightforward. Okay. I should probably label that. Function notation. Okay, number three. Oh, this is a really interesting one. I like this one. This one's, this one's a little weird. A, drag a diagram shows a circle with an inscribed right triangle and some of its measurement in units. 
So we have a right triangle inside the triangle, inside the circle rather, and all three vertices are on the circle itself. Based on the diagram, what is the circumference and unit of the circle? <clears throat> so we have a, an inscribed right triangle. Uh, so we want to find this missing side. And the reason for that is when you have an inscribed right triangle, the hypotenuse is going to be the, the, uh, the diameter. So this is actually the diameter of the circle, right? Um, so we need to find the diameter before we can find the circumference. So if you go on the, there's a little uh, exhibit button on the computer. If you click on that when you're taking this digitally, and the circumference will come up as c equals 2 pi r, right? Or c equals d pi, depending on how you look at it. So we need to find the r, right? And we can find the r if we know the, if we know the diameter, we, can, we know the radius, because the radius is just ha is half of the diameter. And we can find this length here because this is a right triangle, and we can always use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem, to find the third side that's missing in a right triangle. So we're going to do that. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> and that is also on the reference guide on the uh, exhibit sheet. Actually, let me double check that. I think I'm pretty sure it is. Let's double check. Yeah, it is. Let's double check. It's, a, it's where, where the uh, right triangle section is on the right-hand side of the exhibit when you press the button. All right, so let's plug these in. So we're going to have 8 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared. 8 squared is 64. Uh, 6 squared is 36. And 64 plus 36 is 100. So 100 equals c squared, so we find the square root of each. And c will be equal to 100. Oh, sorry, c will be equal to 10 units. They don't give us any measurements, so 10 units. So if this is 10, that means the radius, right, from here to here would be 5. It's the radius, so we're going to go 2 times pi times 5, which is actually 10 pi. And like I said, it's actually just d pi, so. But so most people don't remember that. Most people remember it this way. So 10 pi units. Okay, so there you go. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to stop there just because I have class starting very soon. So I guess this would, I guess we'd label this as knowing Pythagorean theorem. and inscribed triangles, because you have to understand that an inscribed triangle's hypotenuse would be the diameter. Inscribed triangles, and also how to find the circumference. So these are the things you need to know. So of the three, first three problems, I'd say this is probably the most challenging. Uh, all of us should have a very strong grip on distribution. This is something we do quite a bit. Right, function notation we've used quite a bit as well. This one I could see confusing people, so yeah, keep your eyes open for something like that. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.